Three, five, four.
Hi, Dale. Hey, Jim. How are you? Well, <laughs> I guess I'm all right. This is a beautiful day right today weather it is i'm regretting a little bit the earlier meeting time at this particular moment because it's so nice out there it is i it's it's hard to believe actually um i you know we haven't even come close to a frost yet and usually by this time every i keep usually keep track of when the first frost occurs and we're we're already just even with it or well or you know or past it by a few days so I guess we have to thank global warming for that <clears throat> or something, but <laughs> we will see. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Are you still getting tomatoes out of your garden? Um, well, <laughs> some things have gone by and the tomatoes mostly have, although there are a few little um, um, plants that were that sort of grew from seed that was scattered around last year that are actually still producing. So a few, a few tomatoes occur from time to time, but it's, you know, I lost most of them when the, um, when the porcupines and the, um, and the raccoons got involved with my garden. It's been a rather bloody summer. Sounds <laughs> it. I, um, <clears throat> uh, between the chipmunks and porcu porcupines are just devastating to gardens. And yeah, as you the know, worst. they are the worst. And and my record this um, this summer, which uh, which I said is four uh, four four casualties, uh, um, <clears throat> and um, I you know I've had one or two before, but never anything like this. So Mother Nature's little vermin are quite hungry this year, I guess you'd have to say. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. But. <clears throat> Uh, since no one else is here I, <laughs> yet, I guess, I've been working on a um, a, a, a document that a, a, a newly found a German Swiss friend of mine wrote, uh, and it's pretty intense because it's very philosophical and and has a a, a very deep spirituality to it, and his English is not very good and he wanted he wants to publish it in english so he oh my when he, when he found out that i was an english teacher he said could you edit <laughs> could you edit this and so he threw it into a program called deep l i don't know if you've ever heard it or not but it's a translation program that um, one can buy online and sent me over um you know this this 37 40 50 page document and um I have never had such a difficult time in my life uh, trying to write it into nice, workable, readable English. Uh, so that's been my sort of literary project for uh, for most of September and a good part of October so far. So, so wow, I, I good, good for you. That's a that's a tall order. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, I I hope you're writing. I, I hope you have you been able to get back to do any writing at all. That's not so much mm -hmm. the the whole COVID. You know, yeah, yeah, your yeah. year, two years was just, it was, it was hard. I mean, it still is hard. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, the stress, so I feel like, you know, I'm kind of coming out the other side, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I still, I still dabble. I'm actually right in the middle of a, um, a plot workshop that one of my good writer friends um, who is, is <clears throat> giving. So, you know, I try to just keep up with the craft best <laughs> I can. And, oh my, well, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, I think it's, you know, really good writing. I feel like it, it requires kind of a, a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you need a lot of contemplative time, you, you know, sure. it can't be rushed. You need to end, mm -hmm. um, at <clears throat> least this stage in, in my life, it's, I don't have it, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe in another, another decade or so when I'm headed, headed toward a little bit more towards retirement, um, but uh, you know, I find it, it it comes in waves depending on what else is going yeah. on in my life. Yes, it does. It does. Um, uh, the work that you do, um, I mean, doing all that online work, which I think is is quietly detrimental to writing um, in some strange ways, um, maybe not so strange ways. Um, so that's a problem too. Um, because it preoccupies, it takes so much of your soul and attention. And I don't know, <clears throat> difficult, very difficult. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, speaking of the devil, look who's here. There's Graham. Good Graham. He's working on connectivity there, I think. I, I stopped by Graham's house. I go for these long walks in the woods. And, and I've Graham. heard about your long walks. <laughs> I've heard about them. Oh, you have? Really? I have. I have. <laughs> Graham, Graham actually told me. I was talking to him. Oh, and he said, oh my he said that you, you were popping out of the woods just as he was coming back from the same place you had been. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, no, not a big crowd of us yet. Yes. Uh, yeah. Jim regularly pops out of the woods having walked all day somewhere yeah. in, in the wilds. In the MDC land, mostly, uh, which is um, and finding these nice trails for for Graham to take his uh, to take his bike on. I found a brown one that and just other mountain connected. biker. And yeah, other not, mountain bikers. Like Dale has yeah, an excellent yeah. mountain bike with a motor as well. Oh my God. I'm a little you know, embarrassed here, about it. All of it. I'm a little embarrassed about my electric bike. <laughs> I, well, Gail, I have found the most beautiful trail for uh, for this that I have, you know, that's been pruned and tuned um, <laughs> for for you know for cyclists. And and it's it's right in the heart of um, you know the MDC land. And and someone just put this trail together by combining two logging trails and clearing, cutting the brush and putting, you know, uh, uh, paint on the trees so that you wouldn't get lost. And it's, I, I'd love to know who did it because whoever did it did a superb job. And it's an and it's extraordinarily beautiful um, hike. It goes off of a new Boston road and and the Sibley Swamp Road, and um, it's it's if you ever get over that way, it's I can tell you exactly where it is. It's not difficult to find. I would, I would brand, love to know. I would love to know. It's it's brand new. It's only um, judging by what I could see from the cuttings and the chainsaw work and one thing or another. I think it's I think it was maybe done last year, but um, it, it's been um, it's kept in, in an absolutely beautiful condition um by somebody and it's i think a part of a longer route because the the, the the blazes go up into wendell and then also go um uh go east uh, towards new salem so but this is just a part of it within the you know the quabbin reservoir system so I, i'm I'll, gonna ride i'm gonna ride on it in the next week or so, so i'll give you any i'll give you my review Ah, there you have it. Oh, thank you. Well, well, yeah, I would, I would love to know how to, how to, how to get to it, um, so I can check it out. Oh okay. yeah, I'll even be able to show you that. Yeah. All right, yeah. If you can, if you can, like, just send me a. Jim Google marked map. it on my map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you send me a Google map and just like put a little tag or something mm. where the where the tra where I can find the trailhead if it's off off New Boston Road, I should be able to to find. Once it. I can recommend it and uh, know exactly myself, then uh, you'll have it. So, all right thanks. it's very it's very easy to find yeah i can give you very specific directions i'll i'll email you those that'd be great so where's the rest of our party i don't know well steve <clears throat> steve already emailed and, and he had a, a minor conflict and he said he wasn't going to be here till uh 5 30 um i don't know where craig is um, well so. i guess that, that then we're it and we have a quorum yeah, we're it. we, we have a quorum we can go we can okay. go so Good. let's so declare let's do it declare the meeting open yeah <laughs> yep all right um so um we just a reminder that we need to do roll call voting that, that <laughs> our little be, like hands it's gonna be so the, difficult i know right <laughs> So um, our first order of business. If Jim is... can just remember who, who, how he votes, then uh, then he'll know by uh, by mathematics, simple mathematics, who the other person did or didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. So um, yeah. So we need to approve our uh, previous meeting minutes. So I'd like to make a motion to do that. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Great. And now we will do a roll call vote to approve meetings as submitted by Jim. So I'll do myself first. I vote aye to accept the meetings. Graham? Uh, yes, I, um, I, I vote to accept. And, and so do I. Right. Wonderful. Oh, look, look, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> now, Gail, do you officially get a vote now? as the manager? Uh, I don't officially get a vote. So if we want to record these votes as just the board members that Jim and Graham 
voted that is mm -hmm. just fine. I don't think anyone's ever going to go through it with a fine tooth comb, Jim, <laughs> as, as, as I often say. The more you write, the less they'll read. I suppose, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of spinning it into a Faulkner novel, actually. Ah, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, All right. Uh, Hut report. Uh, anything to report, Graham? Not much. I do a seasonal um, uh, test of the exhaust fan by, uh, by making sure that the whole system works. I turn the, the setting for the exhaust fan down to 60. And it thinks, oh, it's too hot in the hut, and it runs the exhaust fan. Everything opened, uh, the air blew through. I did wonder whether it would blow the, um, the where the intake is is where the Simply Safe now sits right in front of it, and I I I was ready to catch it if it yeah, blew. Yeah, oh, no, <laughs> but it didn't. It, it didn't didn't even shake it. You know, Good. it's not it's not such a rush of air. That, so anyhow. Um, so we're uh, we're all good. So it worked, and then I turned it back to ninety degrees, which is where normal setting is. I flipped the um, AC units, um, and um, um, yeah, there was nothing, um, nothing, no pests or anything in the hut, and uh, and the uh, and the report from the month, um, as as Gail knows, uh, was you know there were about thirty um, less than uh, interactions with the uh, help ticket sort of process. And um, uh, and there were uh, some of them were you know just um, questions obviously so there weren't many problems uh, maybe ten internet issues or or a little more internet issues because there was some um, some problem with internet um, and there was certainly a, a bunch of um, uh, cell phones that weren't working which Crocker looked into and it turned out to be one of the um, one of the cellular carriers. Um, yeah, uh, that, that was why we were seeing um, questions about um, cell phones, uh, Wi-Fi calling not working. Right, because okay, yeah, that, that it makes goes sense. Into, yeah, it was yeah. When, when the Wi-Fi has to go into the cloud, it travels via, you know, basically big um, handlers. And uh, one of those handlers was down, a little like Facebook was down for a while. And, a few other things. There were a whole bunch of disturbances this month in the in the cloud. So, so anyway, nothing nothing remarkable, and um, uh, and um, hardly anyone. Um, uh, the way I read the the um, the repair for the repair list for the month was there were no drops repaired in August. But maybe maybe Gail, Gail told me that maybe there was um, there was one or two. So. Not much. Yeah. Again, we don't we we don't see those on the report that Tim gives until it's billed. So there's a little bit of a delay there. Um, if you if you look if you look at the um, you don't see it in the um, in the trouble ticket list, but it usually shows up as um, as the repairs. They actually, they actually list the repairs for the month before they bill them, but maybe they miss them sometimes and then catch them later when they're I don't know. So huh? Okay. Yep. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, the reason I know about them in advance is because they're supposed to email me whenever a dispatch goes out, ah. just so I'm, I'm aware. Oh, so um, you did get dispatch emails in August. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So th good. those should show up shortly. Okay. Um, but the bottom line is yeah, barely any much. repairs whatsoever, which is great news. Yeah. Um, Jim, I hope that um, you moved our fibers somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. because otherwise they've been stolen. <laughs> <laughs> they are, um, uh, the fiber spools have been moved um, uh, behind the, uh, the garage where the, sand, uh, the salt sand, sand salt, and sand. Sand, salt sand is, is, is located. That was done just a very short time ago. Was, I must have called uh, Tim Hunting two or three times, Becky Torres, the works, and then finally somebody somebody got the got the backhoe with the fork started and, and made the move so we're all set thank you so much for doing that i will um make sure that crocker knows about that so yeah in the case of an emergency a vendor knows that they're in a new place but that's great um so i continue to get bankruptcy uh filing from triwire wow um it's not a big deal because oh, um, let's ask they, for, let's ask for money. I mean that's, <laughs> <clears throat> that's 
Tell, tell them we're a creditor. Yeah, they don't, we're not a creditor, but because we have an active contract with them, we keep getting copied in on all of their legal documents. Interestingly enough, the last document that they sent was about selling off their assets, yeah. which I was surprised about because I, they're still continuing to operate at this juncture. Wow. Um, but maybe that's not going to, you know, maybe they're going to fold. I, I don't know. Um, in the meantime, Crocker is working with uh, Certex to um, try to get a repair and maintenance contract with them instead. Um, they were also looking at Collins. Um, and so that remains to be seen. But again, in the meantime, Triwar is still operating, um, still, still happening. Um, so we'll see what happens. I, I thought Triwar had thousands of employees across you know, the country. So um, I, I thought they were oh, 900 people, I guess. I, I vaguely remember yeah. looking once. Um, so they're a big company and, um, and, you know, in the whole Northeast. So it's amazing if they're uh, really folding their, folding their tent or whatever you say. Yeah. And again, I don't know. It, it was just weird that that last legal document I got was all about them selling off their assets. Yeah. Or maybe, uh, you know, some of them to raise some capital to pay off their, their uh, creditors. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. 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 Um. Let's see. So we met with Westfield Gas and Electric last week. You guys were there. Um, I, uh, I know that Steve wants to talk more about this. He has thoughts. So let's just table this one and, and we'll come back to it. Okay. Okay. Uh, financial report, also a Steve thing. So we'll wait another 15 minutes for um, him. That the, the only thing I have to uh, tell Jim, you're already aware of this, that our meeting with FinCom is scheduled for February 22nd. So we'll need to work out a, out a budget um, in December and January uh, to, to show to them. We don't need any money from FinCom, which is really nice. It's just, here's our plan. Mm -hmm. Here's why we won't be needing any funds uh, from the town. Yeah, the, the further we can separate... <laughs> or keep our separation both politically and monetarily from the town for the better off we are. Jim, yep, do you have like, a FinCom meeting tonight? Yep. That, yeah, follows it, it follows this. Well, if, if, we're, if we're finished by 6.30, I, I don't know whether we'll be cut off, you know, like we have been in the past, Gail, but um, at any rate, 6.30 is when uh, the fin, a FinCom meeting starts. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, there, uh, and yeah. There'll be, There'll be one more um, Wednesday uh, FinCom meeting in November, and then it will switch back to Tuesday in December. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully our earlier time will let us be done um, sooner than later. Uh, let's see. I'm still waiting for the diagram from Crocker. Uh, this is going to be used for our secure to make some movement on that security audit we've been trying to move forward on and also to present to Westfield and Gas and Electric to help them understand our setup more for that uh, ring protection plan. Um, our E911 message got sent out yesterday. Um, hmm. I hope that you both got it or you know, someone in your household got it if you're not the subscriber, but it, it went out both on Town Announce that I sent and went out on um, uh, to all, all subscribers. Um, it was, <laughs> I, um, you know, whenever we, whenever we send something out, it always generates more work, uh, because, because people reply to it and ask questions and all of that. Um, and mm -hmm. it was so interesting because for this one, I got three messages. One was from a guy who was, who was trying to explain to me that the, um, uh, that even with VoIP calling, you have to have an address on file, mm. you know, and I was like, that, yes, thank, thank you for reminding us. It's all set. We've checked all the addresses. Yeah. The second one was from just a nice short email saying, wow, this is really helpful. Thank you. And the third email was a big complaint about um, uh, the battery box. Um, shouldn't you have told customers this? Um, uh, your email, although informative, plays on fear. Oh, um, there's fear of not receiving help. 
Uh, there's no consideration given to the cost of the hardship presented in coming up with the money um, to maintain your landline telephone. Um, uh, is this a sales ploy on behalf of Shootsbury Net? Um, I've had a, I, I, because it's a, a public forum and I want to protect privacy, I will not mention the name, but I've had another exchange with this customer who's further complaining about the battery and um, that Shootsbury Net has a monopoly in town. And no, we don't. No, absolutely not. They can get HughesNet or any other satellite service that they want. We do not have monopoly. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I explained to her that the, um, you know, if, if she's very unhappy with the battery, you know, needing a battery backup and everything that was not the, it was weird because I didn't, we never even met, mentioned that in the 911 yeah. message, but, you know, please switch to Verizon service. We don't, we don't want you to keep shoots very yes. net phone service if you don't want it. Yes. It's, it's uh -huh. not a monopoly. Go no. and do this. So, and that person owns the battery. We all own our batteries and, and they don't last forever. So, um, yeah. you know, we will all have to replace our own UPSs when, um, uh, you know, they've, they've got a warranty for a year and I'm sure I'm past that on mine. So. Yeah. Yeah. She was really, you know, I told her that Crocker has some battery backups left over. She can call them, you know, she won't pay any more than if she bought it originally. She's very unhappy that it doesn't come with installation. Um, so anyway, yeah. the bottom line on this one is but, you can't please everyone. We did our best. Um, there's yeah. Um, let's see. I have one um, one item um, which I don't. I might as well get in the minutes and uh, keep the meeting moving. Uh, I, that is uh, um, that, that um, uh, lever. It would lever. It is uh, open to uh, con or to uh, the possibility of of sharing uh, emergency supplies of fiber, real stuff. Oh yeah. If, if, if they can't get, if they couldn't get what they, uh, what they needed in a timely manner, uh, uh, you know, and that, that would be a mutual aid sort of a consideration. Um, and they just asked, as I mentioned to Gail um, uh, at some point or other, that they just said, give us the part numbers of the cables because Leverett has some self-supporting fiber um, for uh, some counts and, and, and those, those cables wouldn't be interchangeable. Um, so, uh, so I will come up, I'll pull out the part numbers and, uh, and I, unless, unless um, Jim, unless you're against um, sharing that information or even entertaining the possibility of, of, of having mutual aid on fiber, it would be, oh. it would be, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea, right? No, yeah. no, no, I, I'm all for working okay. with Leverett. Um, <clears throat> I oh, won't yeah. no, mention let, let, that there, let it be noted that we yeah. that we all agree that that's a good idea, yeah. and that and that it should be done on a basis of replacing what's taken, um, and um, we can fine tune that after. Yeah, you know, we can fine tune the details once we know which, if any, of those cables are of interest to them uh, or mutually beneficial. Uh, and then uh, Jim Draw um, responded similarly with a list. He may have copied you as well, Gail. Of um, of things that some of the wide west towns have in spares, and uh, and we know that they're totally interchangeable because they were all from Westfield right. Gas Electric um, uh, stockpile. So, um, so uh, Jim, uh, if you're not against um, uh, or Gail, if you don't have any arguments against sharing that information, and um, and if if they decide that they want to get a mutual aid agreement, then there'd be some memo of understanding that I'd be happy to write the first draft of. Um, so. so that's how I'll proceed therefore. I'll, I'll share that. I'll share the information with our spare reels and they'll be able to look it over and they'll be able to say whether they want to do a mutual aid if we want to do a mutual aid, okay? That sounds great. Thank you, Graham. Um, it's annoying to me that there's not chat for our meeting. I think that maybe the town turned it off to avoid side conversations. Yes, it's illegal under, oh, I know the yeah. OML thing. I just did the webinar. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, so, so okay. We can't have chatting. Oh. All right, so no chatting. So I am just gonna send you a quick email here um, with our fiber information of, the, of the, the, sp the spare reels. Excellent. Um, so hold on, that's coming to you in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Spare fiber. Amounts. 
Do we have approximate footage on what's on those reels or not? Yes, we absolutely do. The thing, oh. that, the thing that Gail is sending me has some um, approximate works. Oh, and well. I actually checked, I double checked a couple of the other, um, oh. couple of weeks ago, just to see if it was still accurate. Yeah. Well, needless to say, I'm, I'm, I'm all for sharing and working with, uh, you know, with Leverett. At least there'll be one part of Shootsbury that's willing to do that. Um, as you know, other parts of Shootsbury, um, we won't, <laughs> which will remain nameless at this point. And this brings up something else I wanted to ask you about. What do you both know about the, um, I have it written down here. Um, <clears throat> the, apparently, apparently Leverett, um, New Salem and Wendell got some sort of a state grant for, um, for exploring um, so, sort of, some sort of an IT uh, arrangement. Do you, uh, you, know, you know, IT backup arrangement, a security arrangement. Do you know anything about that? No. Never heard. Nope. No, well, see, I, I, see if you can get a copy, Jim. Well, um, this, is, this is what happened. Um, Dan Keller um, uh, talked to Mike Binsky about this and, and then contacted Rita Farrell on the uh, select board and offered it uh, and said, uh, is, is Schutz very interested in doing this? Apparently, th this would create a central, um, uh, you know, IT backup systems, you know, to, you know against ransomware and all, all those evil things that are out there in the world. world. And... Um, and so Rita brought it up at um, at, at 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 one of the um, at one of the select board meetings. Becky was there, and Becky nixed it immediately. So um, when we're, we're not apparently, I guess we're not going down that road with Becky, or with the, you know with Leverett. But it seemed like an opportunity of sorts, um, uh, you know, to share something that um, might be um, a very very good idea. I, that's all I know. Uh, oh. I think I did. I did hear about this. The, the state was offering help. It 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 doesn't have anything to do with us per se. No, um, no, you, no. you know that it's it's more about town governments um, being able to prevent cyber attacks and work on their in office security and that kind of thing. So it, yeah. it's not. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really have to do with us. You know directly. Oh just, no, no. You know with with the with the town hall and how they're going to comport themselves when it comes to that. Well, apparently it's, you know, it's a state, it's a newer state of the art arrangement. I, I think, I don't know quite how uh, we in Shootsbury back up or how the town hall folks back up, you know, like all, all the tax data and all those things that are in all of those little Windows computers scattered all, all, all over the town hall. But uh, uh, this, from what I understand, was a, would be a very sophisticated um, IT management solution that the three towns would share or possibly four. Mm. if that was possible but i don't think but uh, becky is notoriously ter territorial about things like this and so i hope i hope the web committee thought about it because it's, i, I, the I web, hope they the did too committee. yeah yeah and i would think yeah. they did but, but I, yeah but, but i don't think bumps into, but, if anyone bumps into web committee person then um yeah, uh, yeah we, we just um yeah we we should ask um yeah. what they thought about it well, I, I have a feeling they know nothing about it. Um, I think it just went to this, uh, you know, to the uh, select board and got no further. And that was the end of it. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry for running late. Sorry it's all right. Welcome, late. Craig. Craig Craig's, Craig's, Craig's internet, internet like... must be working. <laughs> no, actually, I'm, I'm at work. But... <laughs> <laughs> but it is working. But it is working. It is working. Okay. Yeah. From what I got getting in this late, this is not our, our uh, purview. Our purview, right. Yeah. No, 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 definitely not. I just asked it as a matter because I was asked whether I knew anything about it uh, by uh, by several people, and I said no, I did not. It was news to me, but that I I would inquire, and so that's why I and it is sort of vaguely related to to our broadband in business here, so to speak. So hence, that's the reason why I brought it up. The threat would come in through us, yes, but yeah, it'll be, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <clears throat> Anyway, I didn't realize this started at five. Is that correct? It My is. Bad. We um, a couple of months ago we moved to the earlier meeting because of uh, conflicts with other meetings that were happening okay. later. Um, so, so this uh, is moving forward. It's going to be five moving forward. Yeah, I will fix that on my calendar. No worries. Otherwise, we get hacked at six thirty exactly on the yeah, dot. Yeah, I do remember yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> Did I miss anything exciting? Um, 
let's see not nothing really need to, yeah yeah no nothing nothing exciting um we've had a a delightfully low number of repairs good like two since two or three since july good yeah and yeah th those are only drops um so it's yeah, little no, repairs, aren't they? Yeah. Right, right. No, nothing, nothing on our main. So this line, means so. our maintenance reserve is growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah, we have about ninety six thousand okay. dollars right now. Good. Um, so that's that's all all great news. Big holiday party. <laughs> big holiday party. Either that, either that, or a big ice storm. One of the two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, could, you could get that too. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. The other only kind of, a, I don't know if it's exciting or whatever, but um, TriWire's in bankruptcy. I can't remember right. if I mentioned that last time. You did, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. So that's that's kind of proceeding. Um, we don't have another vendor yet, but we do still have Certex that's working with Crocker. They don't have an official contract with them as a subcontractor, but it's not like if TriWire goes away, we'll be out completely out of luck. Yeah, my um, understanding is this is this is Crocker's problem, not ours, yes? Yep. No. Yep, that's good. That, that, but we do. Hopefully, we're only paying Triwire by the month, month by month, a thousand dollars, because it wouldn't make sense to uh, be paying them a quarter or, or anything. Correct. So, so um, yeah, we might maybe ask. Um, Craig no, I, I, I know that we are paying by the month because okay, it's a good. line item on the, our monthly invoices from Crocker. Oh so yeah, we're, that's we're good. good there. Yeah. We're good there. Yep. Yep. Um, so. Steve um, had a had a conflict today, and he's going to be here any minute. He said he would be in at, at a little bit after five thirty. Um, so what I'd like to do is just hang out. We can just have a general discussion when he comes in. Um, I want to talk about the the ring protection meeting that we had with uh, Westfield. Um, Steve has some good points and questions that he wants to discuss tonight, mm -hmm. and then after that, we're going to move into an executive session where nothing here changes, but I get to turn the recording off. Um, do so I have that, to leave? What's no, that? I'm on, do I get to stay? You, you, can, you can stay, yes. It's, it'll be All a right. combined executive session between manager, well, we'll just say I am broadband committee and, and MLP, the purpose Great. of which will be to discuss our up, upcoming um, RFP for contract. Cool. So um, yeah, so that's the flow tonight. So really, we're just hanging out right now, waiting, waiting for Steve so we can have that discussion about um, what's going on with with Westfield and our ring protection. Um, anyone have any topics in the meantime? I'll just report that I had, a, I had an overnight outage that I still don't understand what it was about. Um, the one not... from a few days, the one from a few days ago. Yeah, yeah. Is that, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. I went, it went out overnight or it went out before I went to bed. Um, I talked to somebody who's, let's see, what did he say? I forgot what he said now. I didn't, uh, I don't remember if I talked to somebody now at night, but the next morning when I got to work, I called and the guy said, well, could you do a long reboot? In other words, power down, wait 10 minutes and then power up. So I went home and everything was back up and I have no idea why. Yeah, one, one, one last question that I would have had was, um, did you ever, um, no doubt, you know, you power cycled everything, but yep. did you connect the router? Did you disconnect the router and power cycle the ONT by itself? Uh, yes. Because, yes. Because, okay, yeah. What I did was I took the router out of it altogether and hooked yeah. it up, up directly to the ONT. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And interestingly, one at one point, at one point, shortly after I talked to the guy, I did talk to the guy, um, I had CNN.com up in my browser. That's that's what I used to see if, you know, because I never use them in that way. If it refreshes, I'll know it was new. It refreshed instantaneously, and then it was dead again. And I, for for no particular reason, I don't know what was going on. Browser, yeah. Um, yeah. It never came back again until I went to work, came back, and everything was fine. So... Mm. I don't know. It just so needed a little router. rest. It just needed yeah. a rest. It just needed. <laughs> it just needed to sleep a little bit. <laughs> well, you know that's why I am. I am concerned that maybe the router had, um, you know, some some heat glitch or something. I have no yeah. idea. Not the router. The the ONT. Sorry. The ONT lights were green the entire time, and the phone was fine the entire time. Mm 
Yeah. It's, it's Craig, it's those digital uh, uh, demons that you have to do a, do a special incantation to Could cooperate be. with them and, and, and get their support rather than. <laughs> Could be. I was, I was using a different brand router. I was using a Unisys Unify router. Mm -hmm. um, so I've taken that out altogether and now I'm using our standard Linksys router. And, I don't think that that wasn't the source of the that 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 wasn't what solved it as far as I know, but and Craig, when you disconnected the router and then plugged a uh, laptop directly into the ONT, yeah. um, did it, 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 at that point when you couldn't get the Ethernet on the laptop and it still was showing a green light on Ethernet, was it? Yep. That is that is very, very, uh, very odd, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So, um, so the Calix part probably also thought, oh, you know, Martin's house is fine, you know. So, um, yeah. but if it was some kind of a DNS thing, then I would get green lights all the way across, right? Because I, I would. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, you would have thought, you would have thought it would um, start to flash orange or something. I don't know. Never. The whole time it was green, solid green the whole time. Mm. Nah. Oh, well. Hmm. All right. Well, I, I have another, I have another mystery. Um, so a customer in town uh, reached out because he was unable to log into Hulu account services. Okay. And at first I was like, yeah, you just, you're using the wrong password or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you need to reset your browser. Um, why, why were you dealing with this in the first place? He didn't get a satisfactory response from Crocker, um, uh, you know, and, and, you know, Crocker and, and Hulu said that it was because Crocker had, um, was blocking uh, certain, uh, or, or yeah, it's, somehow Hulu pointed the figure at Crocker saying it's your ISP's fault that this isn't working. Sure. So Crocker got involved. There's some back and forth. This guy actually had a um, uh, here. Steve um, got a uh, um, meeting with Hulu technicians and Crocker technicians to try to solve this. And I was like, "This is this is." He just needs to like clear his browser cache. Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So and this is why I'm involved. I'm signing because he complains. So I'm kind of tracking the issue. So. Three, uh, about three weeks ago, I just bought a brand new laptop uh, for work. I can't log into it on Hulu. Wow. <laughs> and I did all of the troubleshooting things like incognito browser, clear the cache and cookies, <laughs> um, uh, you know, like every you know tried every single browser including microsoft edge trying try yeah, to fix yeah. this and went online and found some threads about this very unusual recaptcha loop that you can get caught in a what uh, what loop a recaptcha a recaptcha yeah. you know That's the thing where it, the ducks says, in the you know like i'm a human yeah. Yeah. um and so anyway this poor, this poor customer has probably spent seven hours, you know, working with various tech support. It got escalated at Hulu. Um, they're like, we, you know, like we don't really know what's going on. Some, some people have, have reported this. We have no fix for you. Sorry. Um, and does I, Hulu work on does Hulu work on your other laptop still? Yes. So, uh, so I guess that's the answer of trying a few different laptops. As unsatisfactory as that is. Again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's well. Here's here's the other oddity is that it only works on the device if that device logged in before this change that Hulu made. And this the 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 customer that complained about this also had the same experience where it was Hulu was working fine. It was working fine, and then at some point in August, it just stopped working. Now. Yeah all my devices that were logged in at some point during before then, including my TV, my desktop computer, my cell phone, mobile app, it all works fine. It's only on this one device. Hmm. Um, you know, I uninstalled, reinstalled the Hulu app on it. Anyway, any ideas? What, what, am I missing anything? Is your, is your a laptop running Windows 11 by any chance? No. Uh, 10. Okay. 10. Okay. 
just wondering security settings something that's blocking um, I turned, I turned off all the ad block. I turned okay, off. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, mixed content, all that stuff. Uh, 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 um, all right. It's, it's okay. If there's no other ideas, yeah, I just right, was like, yeah, yeah. If it's those, if the Crocker text and the Hulu text, yeah, this is, uh, this is a Hulu problem. This yeah, is yeah, not, not a Crocker problem or that, your problem. That is very, that's a very good point. Yeah. That's a Hulu problem. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Hulu can't charge can't charge you for the month. If, if I am do. curious, are you subscribed to Hulu directly or do you get this through Verizon Wireless? I subscribe directly. No, oh. because I have a bundle with Hulu, Disney and ESPN and I still haven't gotten Hulu working, but but I think it's it's my problem. I don't think it's yeah. related to this. I just haven't, but huh. Disney is up and running just fine. Yeah. Anyway. All right, well, well anyway, thanks, thanks for entertaining me and making sure I'm not missing anything. Welcome, Steve. Um, Hi. Hi. Um, so Steve, you're just in time because we are going to talk now about the uh, West or uh, the Westfield um, ring protection. Um, mm -hmm. what, what are the things we need to be thinking about going forward? What are the concerns? And then after that, we're going to move into executive dis uh, session so we can discuss the contract. So okay. Um, anyway, anyone um, thoughts about uh, this ring protection plan? Um, and I'm going to, um, I'm just going to share a document here that I've going so that we can just kind of capture some of our concerns and things we want to, questions we want to ask, things we want to keep an eye on as we move forward with this. Steve, you there? Yes, I am. And that's good because I had, uh, that was a, a concern of mine on two different things that were brought up in the um, Westfield proposal was that, um, you know, we needed to get certain uh, Nokia equipment and we brought up, well, we're using Calyx for that. And then we needed a certain Cisco, piece of Cisco equipment Well, we're using Juniper for that. Is it going to be compatible? Mm, well, that had to be determined. Or would there be need to be yet another piece of equipment as an interface between them? And I start thinking, hmm, we're adding layers of complexity, more things that can break down. So, uh, you know, before we vote to spend money and go ahead with a project, I would want those things to be um, clarified and determined. Graham, do you have a good sense of? I, I of... see your your smile, Graham. Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, well, the, the the Cisco the layer the layer that um, is the Cisco for for Westfield Gas and Electric and Juniper for us um, that that layer is functionally um, you know does the same things um, and and that layer totally isolates. Um, the, at the back end is the Nokia and the Calyx stuff. So, so that, so the the Cisco and the Juniper stuff is the layer that will that that makes whatever your GPON equipment is somewhat irrelevant, I believe. So, uh, but but the Cisco and the Juniper stuff is doing the data transport layer, you know, uh, and and uh, and um, you know they had this, they kind of uh, they deferred. Well, John. Um, John deferred to one of their uh, engineers who kind of thought in general, um, you know, the general principle that it should be, you know, you should be able to do with Juniper what you do with Cisco um, at that and that layer, but un until you actually know the model number. And that's when we discussed um, sharing that, that detail when, um, when Crocker gives, uh, gives it to us. So, uh, so if they have that picture, They'll be able to. They'll be able to tell us um, because they'll ask. You know, they'll ask a Juniper expert if they don't have one themselves. Um, 
Um, but but yeah, your um, your question is uh, is very um, is pertinent, and and the other one was um, the other pertinent question. I think you alluded to it, Steve. Is that um, that we we um, we we won't be much better off if we're heading just to one data location at Springfield and one Federal Street. Um, uh, it'd be great to have two um, diverse sort of thing. They said, yes, they have that possibility, but you know, we'll have to see their proposal that embraces that. And, um, and, and you know, the, the real bottom line is um, whether we can share you know, a 10 gig um, circuit for, um, for the primary and the, and the backup. So, uh, you know, we, they, they really hadn't seemed to have got their, um, well, they still haven't sent us those things that they showed us on the screen. I couldn't see them all, as I um, said. Um, so, um, so, yeah, until they let us hold them in our hands, we, we, I don't think we can really say anything substantive anyhow. And they were just preliminary, so. And that, that concerns me that here, when we talked to them, I think it was a week ago, and it's, oh yeah, we'll send you this. Uh, and, and I mean, it was, it was a file they were opening it. This wouldn't be any big deal to, mm -hmm. uh, to email that out. And even if they just emailed it to Gail and she could get it out to us, it'd be fine. And well, a week later, we don't have it. Uh, it, it you know, raised a certain plot with me about earlier dealings we had with uh, Westfield um, where they were not always... Uh, really prompt in doing things. It's not impressive, is it? <laughs> if these are the people who are looking after our, our, our every moment of, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, a little odd that they should just let that one drop. Not impressive. Yeah, it does concern me getting getting involved with them in a, in a project, like any project like this. And it seems like they have not uh, fixed some of their issues with organization and communication and being on top of things and good project management. Um, you know, I was, uh, uh, yeah, they just seemed a little disorganized and we're seeing the result of some of that. So let's, let's just keep an eye on this. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know how much we can kind of manage up um, them through this process since we're only one of many players and certainly not their priority. Um, but if it becomes too on onerous and, and it just isn't working, um, it, would, it would be a fine reason to pull out and just go back to our original plan of having Crocker do it. Sounds like a good strategy and, and yeah, and managing them up in fact is, would probably not be in our best interest because uh, because we want to see how they perform when they when we're not yelling at them, sort of right. thing. Because that would be the 24-7, 365 situation. You wouldn't want to have to yell at them that your your, your backup hadn't worked um, again and again and again. So yeah, I haven't been to a Wired West meeting in a while, but I, I know they're they're having some issues as other towns are having issues with WG. &E. I think they're just I'm guessing it's because they've grown too fast. They're they're yeah overwhelmed yeah. They, yep. they mentioned at the beginning of the uh presentation last week that their customer count is just over twelve thousand now yeah yeah i'm a, i don't know whether that includes their westfield customers as well if it does not i mean that's significant you know we're we're dealing we're one of the bigger towns of these little towns and we've got you know, 700 and something customers. So, right. uh, you know, they've, they've got a lot in their plate right now. Yeah, and I, that's, suspect, that's, I suspect they're counting everyone. And that's yeah. a bunch of 12,000 customers across a whole bunch of towns. They're all trying to manage all that. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's complicated. I, I've got another thought about um, the uh, routing of, of things. You know, that well, basically to us, this isn't maybe as important to us as it would be to Wendell and New Salem because we've already got two feeds here. We've got the MBI and the Crown Castle. Where the other towns, all they've got is the MBI. But okay, the benefit to us, it seemed to me, was that by going with Wendell and New Salem, 
we can get the MBI um, feed coming down from the north, from orange, which is fed out a green field, instead of coming up from Springfield to Northampton in that way. But I thought a little more about it. We might want to investigate this a little more, I dig up one of those MBI route maps we have from way back when. I have in mind that MBI's first backbone line was down the median strip of the Mass Pike from Boston to Albany. And then in Springfield, they sent a, a uh, a line up the median strip in 91 to pick up places to the north and to get to Greenfield. So I'm thinking, and then from there, we, we can look at the map and determine this. I almost think it then goes east along Route 2 out to uh, Orange and such. So my concern here, and we could determine this, is in fact, if we get a MBI feed from Orange goes through Greenfield, does that still end up going through one Federal Street? Uh, you know, is that where they split that line on the, on the Mass Pike on the 91? Uh, I thought I remember somebody telling us that the Orange one went straight to Boston, but yeah. you know, what, is, what does straight mean? Uh, <laughs> and, and, if not orange, then New Salem, the New Salem feed, I, I, I'm under the impression that it goes east and uh, doesn't involve Greenfield, but I could be wrong. Worth your, very much worth checking into. Certainly on the map, it goes both ways, right? Mm. So what they're actually doing, I don't know. Yeah, because there, you know, there are other uh, towns that are tapping into it, like Hubbardston and, um, and on and on and on towards Boston. And my guess is that, um, my guess is that uh, they're, you know, they, they get their feet out of Boston, but, uh, you know, it would be good to know. Hmm. I just found this map from one of those meetings way back uh, five years or so ago. Well, it's hard to tell because it doesn't it doesn't show anything east of Worcester. So yeah, we'd need to yeah. determine. So I have a map that's it's from 2015, so I don't know. Well, that was well after it was built, right? I can't share it, but um, there's lines that go all the way out to Shirley and Ayer and Lemonster, but not past that. AYER -A is the easternmost town on their, mm. their network. Well, this could be on our list of things to do. Oh. And the network, the internet point of presence, the only internet point of presence in the entire map, and this map goes all the way out to here, is Springfield. Huh. Same problem. Yeah, we definitely want to look into this because there's no point in go jumping through our loop hoops to mm. go up there if we're if we're going back through Springfield again. Yeah. Matt Crocker must know this. Yeah. Um, when we talked uh, about this with him a couple of months ago, um, there were ways that Crocker can have a point of internet presence in Greenfield or Boston mm -hmm. and maybe Albany. I can't remember though. So they did, they did have a way to solve this, but you know, it would cost. Yeah, they were they were going to have their own line back to Boston, independent of that Crown Castle fee. And because because they already have apparently. Yeah, and they knew that their that one that Crown Castle feed was a weak point in their system because and when we went down that time, it wasn't just us; it knocked out Crocker's whole internet system for all of their any place they serve right right the whole brains of their operation were there at one federal and it took it all out so 
So, okay. Any, any other things that we should add to this list? Um, just to um, keep in mind, I'll, I'll put it on one of our ongoing tracking lists. Yeah, I guess we just sit tight and see what they yeah. come up with. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think there's anything more we can do with this until we actually get the plan from Westfield to see what it is no. um, in a concrete way. Okay, so I'm going to uh, record that, save it. All right, anything else before we, oh, I should stop the share here. Um, move into executive session things. Okay. Gail, so, what do I do about um, taking Notes. Yeah. So, yep. It's separate, um, separate set of notes for executive session. Yeah, separate set um, of notes. I reviewed okay. how we go about doing this. Um, so I'll read what I know. If anyone, if any of you see me taking a misstep of how I'm explaining it or procedure, uh, please speak up because uh, this is the first time we've ever done this over Zoom, and haven't done it at all in what three years. So there's several different reasons to call for an executive session. Um, this particular one that we're invoking tonight is to discuss uh, strategy with respect to collective bargaining um, um, or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the government's R, bargaining or litigating position, um, and to conduct strategy sessions and preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel to actually conduct bargaining and contract negotiations with non-union personnel. So the reason is so that we can, in plain English, discuss our upcoming RFP process. Doing this in an open forum would be disadvantageous to us. Um, we have done so the first, yes. So that would go in the notes, Jim, that, that we go into executive session because we're mm -hmm. going to discuss that proprietary sort of you know, thing that, yeah. yeah. We, and, that, we and, that's the last, and that's the last part of your notes for the public part of the meeting. Yep. I, well, there's one more. We have to vote on this. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so, I, so, so I just we we I just announced the purpose of the executive session, and now the majority must vote in a recorded roll call for executive session. This but will we, be a we need a we need a motion from one of the board members to go into executive session for that reading. All reason. right. Thank you. So I move that we go into executive session for the. I second. Uh, I second. For the Wonderful. reasons of contract negotiation. That, Thank know. you. Okay. Planning for planning for contract negotiation. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I will call a roll call vote. So uh, Steve. Schmidt, aye. Graham Sefton. Aye. Jim Hemingway. Aye. And what was we're, we're going to discuss? Could you give me exactly what that? Yeah. Discuss planning for RFP and contract negotiation. Okay. And Jim, you would note that Craig is a, Craig stays because he's in the broadband committee, so. Okay. Yep, and so so do I, um, but also as the managerial role. So- gotta, I've gotta have you. <laughs> um, so am I voting on this given that the broadband committee is also involved in this? Um, yeah, because it's MLP business. Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah we're, that's fine. We're, advisory guests i believe on this one craig you and me but right, you're in you're you're part of the discussion yeah, yeah. absolutely yes. yeah. yeah i already asked about that so yes okay okay um <clears throat> great we've done the procedures jim has recorded the ending of our meeting at approximately 5 57 uh we'll start taking a separate set of notes and i am going to shut off the recording now <laughs>